welcome back to yet another exciting day of the MyZone Online School. My name is Marisol Stofberg and today we are going to have so much fun together learning and becoming smarter. So before we start, please remember to always sanitize your hands. And also remember our theme for this week is staying active. So even though you're on your couch, you can still imaginary run. I like imaginary running or you can stretch. But please remember to stay active and to keep moving even though you are in your house. So now let's jump right into our lessons for this week. So pre-primary and grade one, week six, lesson one. Explanation of symbols on worksheets are as follows. Use coloring crayons to color the picture. Use your finger to follow the track or line or show the correct picture. Use a coloring crayon to draw a line or write a number or sound. Look at the picture and say the number or sound out loud. Use a scissors to cut on the dotted line. Look at the picture. Use these symbols for the lesson of the day, which will be allocated at the top right side of each page. For example, lesson one, prepositions and directions. Welcome to my zone online school. My name is teacher Nitai and let's welcome my friend. Before we begin, let's sanitize our hands. Rub, rub, rub your hands back inside and forth. Now your hands and mine are clean. We have sanitized. Rub, rub, rub your hands back inside and forth. Now your hands and mine are clean. We have sanitized. Now you need to remember to maintain social distance and you should always wear your mask. Today's lesson is on cardinal numbers and time. Let's turn to page three of our booklet. If we look at our booklet, we have a clock, which is on the booklet. It has some dots on it and some numbers. Some numbers are missing. And as we count, we know we always start counting from one, two, three, four, five, six. And if you look at the clock, seven is already there. Then we go to eight, 9, 10, 11, and 12. On today's activity, I would like you to color in the clock that you see on page 3. Once you have finished coloring uh, the page, I would like you to get your pair of scissors and cut along the dotted line on the left side of the page and paste it on page 4. Then we will turn over to page five. On page five, today's activity is asking us what happens first. As we can see, we see pictures which are lined up. On the first picture, I want us to study the picture together. There is a tree standing by on the side, on the right side, and the sun. 
but focus on the face of the sun. Look at the eyes of the sun. The sun is fast asleep. The eyes are closed. So it tells us something there. Let's look at picture number two just below the first one. The sun's eyes are wide open and wide awake. But we, can see, we cannot see the complete face of the sun. It tells us something. We will go back to that and explain a little bit later. Let's look at the third picture. The sun is up in the sky and we can see the whole face of the sun. Now let's go back to the numbers on the right. Top side of the page, we have number one, number two, and number three. Now we need to know in the daily um, days, if we look when the sun rises, which one is going to be the first picture? What happens first? Let's look. Remember, focus on the sun's eyes. The first picture is going to be the one in the, the second place. So we will have to write number one in the second block next to the second picture. That is what happens first. Now let's move on. Once the sun is rising, what happens next? It goes high up in the sky. So that picture is right at the bottom of the page. That is our second picture. That is what happens next. So we have to write number two in the box at the bottom. Now let's look at the picture right on the top. The picture on the top, it tells us the sun is ready to go to sleep. It's time for sunset. So that is picture number three, which is going to be our number three picture. That is what happens last. Now, when you have finished with page five, let's turn to page six. On page six, we have an instruction given there. It says, fill in the numbers in order of the events, starting from, excuse me. <laughs> fill in the numbers of, fill in the numbers to the order, the events from start to finish. Now let's look at the pictures. Let's study the pictures together. Let's look at the first picture right on top. We can see the children are walking to go to school that we are not doing these days because of the COVID-19. Let's look at the next picture just below it. There is a little boy brushing his teeth. He is in the bathroom. Let's look at another picture just below that. It is uh, the little boy's bedroom. And there is no one in the bed, which means he has woken up. Let's look at the last picture right at the end of the page. The little boy is getting dressed. It means the boy is getting ready to go to school. Now we need to put the order of the events. When you wake up to go to school, what happens first? First, when you wake up and leave your bed, as we can see. So the picture with an empty bed is picture number one. So you need to write one in the little box just below the bed. Let's look for the second picture. When you have woken up, what is the next thing that you need to do? You go to the bathroom and take a bath, brush your teeth, and make sure you are clean to get ready to go to school. So picture number two is where the little boy is brushing his teeth in the bathroom. Let's write number two on the little corner 
next to the picture where the little boy is brushing his teeth. Now we have to move to the next picture. What happens next after brushing our teeth and taking a nice bath? We need to get dressed. The little boy at the bottom of the page is getting dressed to get ready to go to school. So that's picture number three. Let's write number three in the little box next to the picture. And what happens next? when the little boy is ready to go to school. The last picture is right on top of the page with uh, a little girl walking to school. Now let's turn over to page seven. Page seven has almost the same activities as page six. We need to put everything in order of the events. How does everything happen? Which comes first? Good. Now let's look. When mommy wants to bake some cookies, what does she do first? First, she should have all her ingredients with her, which is the eggs, the flour, the milk, the salt, the baking soda. That's the first picture I can see on my right. Okay, let's move to the next picture. Then what happens next? The next picture, we need a bowl to mix all the ingredients. Where is the bowl with a spoon? The bowl is right there. It is the second picture in the first row. So that is going to be um, the next uh, number two. That is our number two that happens. Let's move on to the next. After mixing everything, what happens next? We need to cut out the cookies and place them on the tray so that we may be able to bake them. So there is the picture on the first picture is right at the beginning. So that is picture number three. Once we have baked the cookies, what happens last? We can be, eat, we can be able to eat the cookies and there is a little boy eating the cookies. So let's go back to the picture quickly. Our picture number one, is where we have the ingredients, the flowers, the eggs, the milk, and the salt. So that's, let's write number one. Then let's move to where the bowl and the spoon is. That is picture number two. Then picture number three, the cookies are laid down nicely in the tray to bake. That is picture number three. So we write number three in the little box. Then the last part is where the little boy is eating the cookie. So let's write number four. Let's look at the picture at the bottom. The little boy would like to make a nice toy, a little toy car. What does he do? He needs to have all his equipment. He needs planks. He needs nails, he needs a hammer. So picture number one is our third picture in the second row. That's number one. So we put number one right below the picture where we have all the tools and the planks and the nails. Can we write number one? Very good. Let's look again. What happens next? If you have all your equipment and you have all your tools, you need to put your things together, join the planks for you to be able to come up with your toy car. There is the little boy. He is second in the row. He is making his little car with his hammer in his hand. He is nailing 
the nails into the plank. So that's picture number two. Let's write number two. Let's move on. What happens next after nailing everything? The car is done. So the picture right at the beginning of the second row is picture number three. And the car is ready. Now the little boy invites his little sister to join him, to play with him. So the last picture where they are playing with the little car is picture number four. Let's write the numbers. I will just go over a little bit so that you can remember. We need to have all the tools. That's picture number one and the planks. And then picture two is where the boy has a hammer in his hand. And then picture number three, the toy car is ready. And picture number four is the last picture where the two children are already playing. Well done, boys and girls. I hope you enjoyed today's lessons, boys and girls. Now let's sanitize our hands. Rub, rub, rub your hands back inside and forth. Now your hands and mine are clean. We have sanitized. Rub, rub, rub your hands back inside and forth. Now your hands and mine are clean. We have sanitized. Now let's remember to maintain a social distance and to wear our mask all the time. Now, where is Zoshi? I wonder. Zoshi has come to say goodbye. Bye-bye, everyone. Hi, everyone. My name is Zoshi. I'm back. And you can always stay active throughout the lockdown. Uh, you can play with your friends, but keep your distance. Like me and my friend. Yay! And you can also talk and sing to be active. Until next time. Bye! very much teacher Netsai for that wonderful lesson on cardinal numbers and time. So now it's time for our grade 2 and 3 learners week 6 lesson 1. Welcome to my zone online school. My name is Teacher Mudabeti. Today's lesson is going to be on local media. Before I introduce the topic that we are going to do now, I would like to remind you about the COVID-19. Remember to keep your distance of about one meter or 1.5 meter to other people. And remember to wash your hands thoroughly with water and soap and to sanitize. Let us sanitize. You spray it through. You rub it in. Rub out. And through your fingers, make sure it is rubbed in nicely through your hands. Our lesson for today will be on multiples ordinal numbers, capacity, addition, and subtraction. Welcome learners. I hope you are fine at home. My friend, I hope you are fine. 
Okay, we are on page three. I'm going to take the grade twos with me on counting. We are going to count in twos on the first column. How do we count in two? They are telling us that we have to skip a number before we come to the next number. Let's check on the chalkboard. How do we count when we are counting in two? If I am to count in two, I skip one number and I will always count the next number. So if I'm counting in two on these numbers which are on the chalkboard, I skip the first number. So I'm counting two, I skip the third number, I count the next one. Therefore, if I'm counting in two, it will mean I will only be counting two, skip four, skip six, skip eight, skip 10, and I go on. So whenever you're counting in two, you have to skip the other number before you go to the next one. The next one is the one that you'll be counting. That is counting in two. So we try the first column to count in two. And what about counting in three? If I'm to count in three, then I skip two numbers. I'll always count the third one. I skip one and two, then I count three. I skip four and five, then the next one will be six. Therefore, I'll only be counting three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, and I continue. So remember to skip two numbers and you count the third one whenever you're counting in three. And what about counting in five? The same way. If you are counting in five, then you have to skip four numbers. You count the fifth one. So you skip all these one, two, three, four, you skip them, you count five. You skip six, seven, eight, and nine, you count 10. So skip four numbers and you count the fifth one. That is counting in five. Therefore, you will be counting five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and you continue skipping four numbers and counting the fifth one. What about in 10? The same way goes. You skip nine numbers and you count the 10th number because you are counting in 10. Therefore, you'll be counting 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and you continue. So, grade twos, I'll leave you with the work on page three. Finish up all the counting by filling in all the numbers. Let's go to the next page. The next page is for the grade threes. Grade threes, let's try the ordinal numbers. What are ordinal numbers? Ordinal numbers are numbers that gives us the position of something. A position of an object or a position of a person or anything where they are. Okay, as we can see on page, on the page four, we see the number of learners who are lining up. Each one is holding his or her position. So for now, we are going to check which position is all of these learners are holding. They have their names next to them, and therefore you just have to check the name of a learner or of that child on that page, and you will check which position are they holding. The ordinal numbers are the ones that we say first, second, third, fourth and we continue like that those are the ordinal numbers that is how we write them so for now i'm just going to show you how do we write the ordinal numbers let's go to the chalkboard just a bit so that i can give you an example for example if we were running we were racing if i come number one then i am the first how do you write first then i'll write a one and an ST just there. I don't finish the whole first. So that is one. We together. If I came number two, it means I came second. So second is the position that I'm holding. I'll write it like that. What about the third? I'll write third like that. What about if I'm the fourth? Fourth. Like that. From the fourth, then I continue with the fifth, the sixth, using that 
a bit higher than the number. Those are the ordinal numbers. So now we are going to look at the kids who are lining up there and check their positions which they are holding as they are standing in that queue. Let's go back to our page four and fill in the ordinal numbers in their position which they are holding. It says, look at the line of children playing, follow the leader. Rachel is the leader. Do you see Rachel? Rachel is the first child. Now, so we are starting with Rachel, meaning Rachel is the first child in this order. Number one, who is the 10th place? Therefore, you just have to check and count who comes number 10. So let's count and see who comes number 10. So Rachel will be the first one. Mark, two, three, Liz, Ryan, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Eric is number 10. Therefore, Eric is the 10th child. Are we together? Are we getting it? Yes, it's not very difficult. It's just the number, the position on which the child is standing. So Eric is standing in the 10th place. So you write the name of Eric there. And I would like you to do the rest, number two up to number eight. Thank you. We are going to learn about capacity on page five. Now, what is capacity? Capacity is the amount of space that a container can hold. For example, the capacity of this glass, that is the amount of water or the amount of liquid that I pour in this glass. That is the capacity of the glass. If I pour the water or the liquid in this jug, to make it full. That is the capacity that this jug can hold. And what about the classroom? The capacity of the classroom also refers to the amount of people or the amount of things that the, this classroom can hold, that it can have. That is the capacity. So on page five, we are looking at the glasses. Now, what is when we talk of a glass is full or a glass is half full or a glass is empty, what does it mean? I'm going to demonstrate for you to show you what we mean by full. If the glass is full, you pour the amount of liquid, whatever type of liquid it is, until the glass is full. That is what we can say this is now full because now we have covered the whole capacity of that glass. This is full. Are we together? That is full. Now, what about if it is half full? I'm going to pour half. Half means the container is not to the capacity that it can hold. It's just up to the middle. So I'm going to pour up to the middle of this glass. That is a half of this glass that it can hold. So if I have to compare this glass and this glass, there is nothing in this glass. That is what we say empty. The glass is empty. It's not holding anything. There's nothing in it. But that glass is half. And if I fill it up to the brim, then that is what we call full. All right. So when you check on this cups or the containers which are on page five. I want you to draw for me the amount of liquid that a cup or a jug should hold when they say it's half full. Up to where are you going to draw the first cup? Half full. Up to where are you going to draw the second one? Full. And the third one is empty. Up to where are you going to draw? So do the rest to show where the amount of water or where the amount of liquid should end up. And on the second exercise under there, with the three containers there, I would like you to tell me the first cup there. Is it empty? Is it full? Is it half full? Do the same with the second one and the third one to show me what does it mean when it is like that. Is it a full cup, empty or half? 
Thank you. Okay, let's go together on page six for the grade twos. Grade two, your work on page six is quite easy. They have given you the answer for the first two numbers. You know they want you to add three numbers, six plus four plus eight. But then they would have given you a 10 to help you to get the answer quickly. So the two numbers which they have indicated with the arrows and the circle, it means those two numbers, when you add them, they give you 10. After you got your 10, now it's easy for you to add the next number. So the first one, 6 plus 4 is 10. To a 10, if we add an 8, what do we get? We have our 8 fingers. You show on your fingers 8 for me. You put your fingers 8 on the other hand will be a full hand 5 and a 3 on the other hand. That makes 8. So if you already have a 10, now you just put a 8 on top of the 10 to get the final answer. That will be 10 plus 8. Then we'll say 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So our answer is 18. When we go to the second one, it's also done for us nicely. The two numbers which are indicated with the two arrows and the circle is a 7 and a 3. Therefore, when you add 7 plus 3, it will give you a 10. After a 10, now you add your two fingers to a 10. What do you get? Therefore, it will be a 10 plus a 2. That will be a 12. So I would like you to go through everything and do the same with the first one that is done. All right, so grade two, enjoy your work there while I'm taking the grade threes to page seven. But grade twos, if you happen to finish quickly on your page, you can as well join us on page seven with the grade threes. Okay, so on page three, on page seven, sorry, with the grade threes, we are going to do the additions and the subtractions. All right, okay, let me give you the first one. We do it together. The first one, let's go to the chalkboard and do the first one together. That is 65 plus nine. Okay, now when you add your five plus a nine, what do you get? Remember, wherever you are, you can get your stones, you can get the sticks, or you can get the bottle tops, whatever you can use that can help you to count. All right. On the chalkboard, I'm going to use the sticks on the chalkboard to count and add. So please follow with me while you are doing it with your own objects that you are having at home. Let's plant. Remember, whenever we are adding or whenever we are minusing, we have to start on our right side. Remember the place values? These are the units and those are the tens. So we have to start with the units first. So five plus nine, what will the answer be? So I'm going to use the sticks on the chalkboard. Follow with me. One, two, three, four, five. That's a five. Now I'm adding a nine to a five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Those are my sticks. Now when I'm adding, I have to plus all of these sticks together. I'm counting them together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Now my answer is fourteen. Do I write fourteen all of it like that? What did we learn? Remember what we learned. You don't write the whole fourteen as it is, you write first the unit there, which is a four. And where do I take my one? The one must go on top there. So you write your small one on top of a six because it has to be added now to the tens. Are we together? Are we still together? Okay, 
Therefore now, a one plus a six plus nothing here is zero. It will give us seven. So that is the answer is 74. Now, what about if it's 17 plus one? Now this one will be very easy for you because it's very straightforward. I'm not going to get an answer with two numbers. Seven plus one. I have my fingers. I can use my fingers or whatever I can use. I can count still the same. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Plus what? Plus one. So when I'm plusing, I have now to count everything together. So that is a seven plus a one. That will give me an eight. There's nothing to carry over to the next um, place value. Are we together? Therefore, it's just an 8. And a 1 plus nothing here plus 0 is just a 1. So that is how we get it. Do you still want me to do the next one? Okay, let's try the next one to remind you about carrying over again. 6 plus 6. Use your bottle tops. What are you getting? That would be a 12. A 6 and a 6 is a 12. So a 12 is like that. Remember, do not write the whole 12 in. You write the unit one is the one that comes here. And where do I put my one? It goes on top of an eight. So one plus eight plus nothing here. That is nine. My answer is 92. That is how we get our answers. Don't forget to carry over. Now let's go back to our page. All right, so do the others also which we have left in the same way. If you have to carry over, don't forget to carry over. Okay, now let's go to the next exercise on subtraction. Okay, on the subtraction, that is very easy. What is to subtract? Subtraction means to take away, to minus. If I have, for example, 10 sweets, and I have to minus two sweets, meaning 10, take away the two. So I'm going to be left with eight. So we do the same with these exercises. The first one is six minus five. I have my six fingers or my six stones. If I have to take away five, then I count five out. What is left is one. That is my answer. The same with the second one, 19 minus 11 meaning 19 take away 11 you are going to count a total number of stones which are 19 and you have now take away 11 count 11 and put them aside whatever is left with you that is your answer so i would like you to do in the same way the remaining exercises enjoy it Remember to sanitize your hands always and wash your hands with soap nicely. Now, rub it through. Through your fingers, your hands are clean and keep your distance from other people. Are we together? One meter or 1.5 meter apart from each other. That is the safe distance. Now we are going to invite our friend Zoshi. Goodbye. Hi everyone. My name is Shoshi. I'm back. And you can always stay active throughout the lockdown. Uh, you can play with your friends, but keep your distance. Like me and my friend. Yay! And you can also Talk and sing to be active. Until next time, bye! Thank you very much, teacher Muda Beti, for that great lesson. So now, since we're learning about subtraction and addition, I'm going to add another lesson for our grade four and five learners. Week six, lesson six.
Morning, Namibia. Morning, grade fours and fives. My name is teacher Kennedy. Welcome to my zone online school. With me here is Chanel. Before we get into our lesson, let's start by sanitizing. Chanel, let's sanitize. Let's rub outside and in between fingers. Right, today's lesson is on plurals. Okay, boys and girls, let's turn our booklets to page three, where we are talking about plurals and plural rules. But before we get in deeper into our lesson, Let's talk about the competencies. At the end of the lesson, learners should be able to identify and use different types of nouns in plural forms. Yes, by the end of this lesson, I hope everyone will be able to identify whenever you are reading, be able to identify nouns and be able to change them or use them in their plural forms, various plural forms. Remember last time, last time we talked about six rules that are to be followed when we are changing nouns to their plural forms. And we said plural, we are talking about many things. When we are talking about singular, we are talking about only one. The rule number one that we talked about is that most of the nouns, they simply add an S when we are talking about them in many, as there are many or in their plural form. Number two, if the word ends in CH, SH, SS or double S, S or X, we add an ES when you are pluralizing. Number three, if the word ends with a vowel and a Y, we add an S. If the word ends in an O, we add ES. Some words ending in an O, we add S in their plural form. There are also other nouns that and with double O, we simply add an S. Let's turn our books to page four. That's where we are having today's lesson. There we are having three new rules for pluralizing nouns. We'll continue from where we left Rule number seven, what does it say? If a word ends in a Y, we take away the Y and add I, E, S. In other words, I can throw away the Y, forget about the Y, and replace the Y with I, E, S. For example, country. Country is a noun and it's ending with a Y. When there are more than one countries, I remove the Y. I replace the Y with I-E-S to become countries. Story. Stories. That's rule number seven. Throw away the Y, replace with I-E-S. Let's go to rule number eight. If a word ends in F, we take away the F and add V, E, S. Take away, the way you take away the Y. If the word is end with an F, remove. Throw away the F, but replace it with the V, E, S. Let's look at the examples. Example number one is the wolf. It's ending with F. When there are many, 
wolves, we have replaced the F. F is no longer there. We replaced it with V-E-S. Calf, calves. Remember this. There are also irregular plural, uh, plurals that do not follow the rules. Some nouns do not follow these rules, these nine rules. For example, tooth, it changes completely to teeth. Men, with M-A-N, will change completely to M-E-N, men. Foot, feet. Child, children. Guys, let's remember these rules are very important. Remember, our basic competence is to be able to change nouns and they follow the rules, turn them into their plural uh, forms. Let's turn our books to page five, where we have our activities. Let's start with activity number one. Fill in the plural form of each of these nouns by following one of the first six rules. You can see that there are different nouns ending with the different letters there, meaning to say you need to consider the first six rules that we talked about. For example, number one, we are giving an example there, an apple, one apple, Many apples. We added an S there. House. Houses. Then you do the rest. We've got fish, men, family, hand, bus, tooth, dictionary, monkey. If you have forgotten, you have to refer to the first six rules. B, write the following sentences into plural. Remember, one thing is, but many things, one thing you say is, many things we say are. For example, I draw a picture on a paper. We drew pictures on papers. So the word that we have changed to its plural form is paper to papers by adding S. Number one, number one is saying there is a child in front of the tree. How are you going to change that sentence and write the nouns into their plural forms? The noun that we are having there is a tree and child. If I were you, I was going to say there are children in front of the trees. So you do the rest. Number two is saying, I am your best friend. How do you pluralize that one? There is, an, there is a pen under the book. The first thing is to identify the nouns and be able to change them into their plural forms. Let's continue to page six. Activity number two, activity number two, write the plural form of each word under the pictures. Draw a picture of each plural word on the correct carpet so that it matches the correct rule. We are given pictures there, but your task is to write in the plural form. The first picture is, what is that thing that is being shown on the first picture? It's a mouse, very correct. When there are many, it's mice. Number two, I'm seeing a ship. So it's your task, your assignment to write the plurals of the pictures shown 
on page six, activity two. You have to continue with the pictures that are shown there and follow the instructions. Let's continue. Activity number three on page seven. Activity number three on page seven. Search for the hidden words and color them in. You are given a, some guidelines there. The words are below. Girls, heads, stars, buses, boys, moose, mice, babies. You have to look for these words. They are there. For example, in the first column, I am seeing the word boys, the noun boys. Mm -hmm. I can color that one. So do the same until you finish all the nouns given below. Page eight, activity number four, Words ending in Y, take away the Y and add I-E-S. It's a matter of a repetition. The Y rule, where you throw away the Y, replace with I-E-S. Words ending in F or F-E, take away the F or F-E and replace or add V-E-S. Remember that not all words ending in F get V-E-S. There are some who are or who do not follow the rules. Fill in the plural form of each of these pictures by adding the correct rule form of plurals. We have got a baby there. And we are being shown the pictures of two babies. So in other words, baby becomes babies. We are following the Y rule where we are throwing the Y and replace with I, E, S. We are having the thief there and there are now many. How do you pluralize it? The F or F, E rule where you are throwing the F or F, E and replace with the V, E, S. Thank you so very much. I want to believe that we are all following because I know you are good boys and girls. Okay, boys and girls, let's turn our books to page five, where we are having an interesting comprehension passage. And this comprehension passage is full with um, nouns, page number nine. There are nouns that are in singular form and some are in plural form. We will be able to identify them. Okay, I'm going to read in your hearing the passage. The topic is robbing the butchery. Mr. Maybaum was the best butcher in town. He had tasty loaves of ham and strings of sausages. His best selling item was the oryx steaks. He cut the steaks in thick slices, in thick slices with his sharp knives. People paid lots of money to get the best meat. One evening, after Mr. Maybaum had logged his store, two thieves broke in and stole all, all the money he made that day. People were upset and helped the police to look for the thieves. They found them hiding on someone's roof. They were going to use the money to buy nappies for their babies. The butcher agreed to let them clean his shop for a whole month as punishment. He would provide their babies with nappies, but they would not get paid until they had paid off their debt. The thieves believe there is no better man 
than Mr. Meiba. We helped them in hard times. Today, they own their factories and sell scarves with uh, butterflies and the ponies on them. They are also helping the poor to keep warm in winter. They do not steal anymore. That's our story. Is that not interesting? And below our passage, remember what I told you. Read for the first time. Go to the questions and read for the second time. There you will be knowing what you are looking for from the passage. Underline all nouns ending in Y. In the plural form, they end in the IES. In the passage, and write them down there. There are many nouns there ending in Y. And there are also many nouns there that are already pluralized by adding IES. Number two is saying, underline all the nouns ending in F. In plural, they end in VES. Number three, who was the owner of the butchery? What is sold at a butchery? Which meat was his best seller? What bad thing happened one evening? Where did the people find the thieves? Who uses nappies? What was the thieves' punishment? What do the thieves do now? As I'm asking these questions, the answers are clicking into my head because I've read the passage. So, thank you so very much, boys and girls. It has been a wonderful lesson. We have learned all the rules when it comes to pluralizing nouns. And I want to believe you are now able to identify nouns. You are now able to use nouns in their plural forms. And you are also able to use the rules accordingly. Thank you so very much. We have to meet in the next lessons. But before we go, Chanel, the rule says we should what? Sanitize. Let's sanitize because we've been touching books. Tables, yes, and the chalks. So we need to sanitize. And let's not forget to keep the social distance. One, at least 1,5 meters apart. Bye-bye for now. Hi, everyone. My name is Shoshi. I'm back. And... You can always stay active throughout the lockdown. Uh, you can play with your friends, but keep your distance. Like me and my friend. Yay! And you can also jog and sing to be active. Until next time. Bye! Wow, thank you so much, Teacher Kennedy, for that great English lesson on plurals. So now we're going to add our last lesson, which is grade 6 and 7, English, week 6, lesson 6. Good morning boys and girls, welcome to my zone online school. My name is Oswald Ndoda and with me here is Pamwene who is going to be, I mean who is going to assist us throughout the lesson. But before we do that, boys and girls, let us always remember to sanitize our hands. We do that inside our palms, outside. 
in between the fingers. And also, we should remember to keep a meter apart, a social distance, and always, always remember to put on your mask. All right. Now, today's lesson is going to be a summation of our nouns. Past uh, five lessons, we have been looking at um, the nouns, and we said there are five types of nouns, which are A, common nouns, proper nouns, abstract nouns, collective nouns, and diminutive nouns. Now, let us uh, run through and see what these really are. All right. If you turn to page three of our booklet, it says, what are they? Number one, common nouns. These are names given to ordinary people, places, and things. For example, book, car, table, tree, person. Common nouns can be countable. You can put a, an, the, or a number in front of a countable noun. Right, remember, um, a and N, these are the articles that we talked about, and we also have a definite article, the. E.g., a boy, six trees, the baby. Common nouns can also be uncountable. Uncountable nouns are abstract ideas, qualities, or, sub, or a substance. You cannot place a, an, or a number in front of an uncountable noun. E.g., his progress is remarkable. Mary spilled the milk on her dress. Right. So that was the, the common nouns. Let's move on to the second type of noun, which is proper nouns. Proper nouns are special names given to particular places, people, and things. They always start with a capital letter. Most proper nouns are not in a dictionary. E.g., Oswald lives in Vinduk, in Namibia, and drives a Toyota. Right, so Oswald, that's a proper noun, Vinduk, another proper noun, and Namibia, a proper noun as well as Toyota. All right. Let's move on to the third category, abstract nouns. These are nouns that refer to something that we cannot see, touch, or measure. It is feeling a quality of an idea, e.g., the naughtiness of Mary tried the patience of a teacher. Right, naughtiness and patience, those are abstract nouns, which means naughtiness, you can't touch or feel the naughtiness. All right, then the fourth category of our nouns is collective nouns. These are names given to, to groups or collections of similar things. Collective nouns are one unit and are singular, e.g., a head of cattle, a, a flight of stairs. The last category is on diminutive nouns. Diminutive nouns are words used for the young and smaller people, creatures, or things, e.g., puppy, Ted Paul. All right, uh, boys and girls, let us turn to 
page four. <clears throat> this is where we are beginning our activities for the nouns. I will read the passage and you should also follow through. Read the text below. My name is John Matt. I was born in Oshakati on the 1st of May, 2006. I live in Vinduk, which is the capital city of Namibia. I live with my mother and father. My mother drives me to school in her old Ford. We always travel to our neighboring country, South Africa, for December holidays. Sometimes we visit my aunt in Swakopmund. Botswana is my favorite destination in spring, especially in September. When we travel to Swakopmund, my father drives his Isuz. That car has been in my family for years. My father goes, goes to rent a Toyota Land Cruiser for our drive on the dunes. I always enjoy our travels. All right. So you also read and then try to answer the questions that follow. Write proper nouns from the text that, uh, that name the following. A, three makes or brands of cars, three Namibian towns, three months of the year. That should be fairly easy, boys and girls. Let us turn to our next page, uh, which is page five, for activity number two. Arrange the nouns in alphabetical order in each column. Right, we are given three columns there, and each column has five words which you would need to arrange in alphabetical order. Right, for instance, if we look at the first column where we have horse, ape, giraffe, dog, and frog, the first word of the alphabet there is ape, followed by dog. We also have frog, horse, and lastly, giraffe. All right, do the remaining activities. Right, um, what types of nouns are these? So in other words, in every column, you tell us what type of a noun it is whether it is a collective, a proper, a common, etc. Right, let's quickly move on to activity three. It says, complete the following sentences with the correct diminutive nouns. A, pig is to piglet, as duck is to duckling. Bull is to bullock, as book is to booklet. So also <clears throat> finish off the remaining sentences. Fourth activity, choose the most suitable collective noun to complete the sentences. The collective nouns that we have there are choir, plug, convoy, library, troop, Platoon. Sentence A says, the school has a large dash of books. All right. That should be, the school has a large library of books. So let us finish off the remaining um, sentences. Let's move on to page um, six. Page six has two activities, which is five and six. Now let us begin with activity five. Highlight the abstract nouns in these sentences. Right, remember what we explained on what abstract nouns are. A says, greed and envy are two qualities 
that no one likes. Greed and envy are two qualities that no one likes. So the word greed and envy, all those words are intangible. So they become our, our abstract nouns. All right. So you do B, C, and D. The last activity, which could be quite interesting, it says, color in the letters for these abstract nouns. Cross out the words as you find them. Now, that puzzle, we are given some words there, which we are supposed to find within the puzzle. And it says you should color. As you find a word, you color it up. Right, the words are dedication, anger, duty, health, confidence, friendship, happiness, hunger, truth, and wisdom. Right, just as an example, if you look in, um, in our puzzle, if you look in column one, the first column, as you read uh, downwards, you can see there's a word there, an abstract noun, happiness. So you color that. All right? And in the first line across, there's also anger. You color that as well. So boys and girls, uh, let's try to identify all those nouns within our puzzle. Thank you. All right, um, boys and girls, let's turn to page seven of our booklet. Last but not least activity there, it says, read the fable and answer the questions that follow. The man, the boy, and the donkey. One day, an old man and his son were taking their donkey to sell at the market. A young man passed by and said, what a silly idea. You are walking that donkey when you could be riding it instead. What is a donkey for but to ride? Hearing this, the man put his boy on the donkey's back and they went on their way. Soon they passed a crowd of women Caring for, uh, caring for a flock of sheep, caring for a flock of sheep, one of the women said, you should be ashamed of yourself, young man. Your father, who is older than you, should be riding and he should be walking. Red first, the boy jumped down so that his father could ride on the donkey. They had not gone far when they passed a man and a woman walking their calves. They said to each other, doesn't, doesn't he know that they can both sit on that donkey? His son doesn't have to walk in the dust. The man quickly picked up his son and set him down in front of him on the donkey. When they reached the town, the people began to jeer and point at them. You are overloading that poor donkey. How can two of you sit on the poor donkey? You both have strength. You, you'd be better off carrying the donkey yourselves. They climbed off the donkey, cut down a pole and tied the donkey's feet to it. They raised the pole to their shoulders and carried the donkey towards the market. The people loved so much that a gaggle of geese with their gooselings rushed by, frightening the donkey. The donkey's hooves slipped loose from the ropes and it fell. The terrified donkey immediately rose to its feet and ran away kicking and barking. That will teach you. 
said an old man who had followed them the whole way. Try to please everyone and you please no one. Right, boys and girls, that's the end of our passage. Now you need to read for the second time and then you turn on the next page, which is page eight, where we have questions. Now the questions are from uh, A to K. A says, where were the old man and his son taking the donkey? Yes, I, I hope you know that they were taking the donkey to the market. So thank you very much, um, boys and girls. I wish you success in all your completion of the questions. Right, boys and girls, thank you very much. We have come to the end of our nouns. I hope all of us did enjoy and we we'll always remember these nouns ranging from common nouns, proper nouns, abstract nouns, collective nouns, and diminutive nouns. Right, um, always, always, boys and girls, remember to sanitize your hands. You squeeze in as usual in the palms, outside, in between the fingers, and remember to stay a meter apart to make sure that you maintain the social distance. And at any given time, your mask should be always on. Thank you very much. See you in the next lessons. Hi everyone, my name is Shoshi, I'm back and you can always stay active throughout the lockdown. Uh, you can play with your friends but keep your distance. Like me and my friend, yay! And you can also jog and sing to be active. Until next time, bye! Thank you very much, Teacher Oswald, for that great lesson on the revision of nouns. So that's it for our lessons for today. I hope you have learned as much as I have. Before I say goodbye, let's please check in with our regions. And today we are visiting the Omaheke region and we're speaking to Ms. Regina Dierghart, who's the principal of Gubawa's Primary School. So please remember to stay active and to sanitize your hands. And I hope you have a lovely day. Bye. I am Mrs. Dierghart, the principal of Gobabas Primary School. Um, Ms. Dierghart, can you please tell us a bit about some of the measures the school has in place to protect parents who come to pick up booklets and also to the teachers who are at the school? Sure. Uh, currently, the measures that we do have in place is that uh, we do have tippy taps at the school and we do have also different gallons at different points where parents can also wash their hands before they are entering the premises. We do have also someone at the gate just making sure that parents are washing their hands at the gate and that parents are not entering the premises without a mask. Regarding the classes, um, whenever parents are coming in, we usually encourage parents once again to wash their hands before they are entering a classroom. There are also gallons in front of different classes and then teachers, uh, all of them received also masks currently and they uh, do have also sanitizers in their classes which can also help them or protect them against the possible spread of the virus. Uh, as principal and as uh, the school, we do really appreciate the booklets. Uh, parents are coming in and they are collecting the booklets. What is important is that the content of the booklets uh, is really accessible and it can help parents also to work through 
all the activities easily. Thank you.